what is up the YouTube. It's been a sweet minute. In fact, it's probably been about a year since I've uploaded to this channel, but nonetheless, got me brew, and uh, I'm here to do a car mods video. So, what we are gonna do today is, I've got a new A4 since, if you watched the last video, I've moved to Ireland to be with my girlfriend, and uh, obviously I had to get rid of the old A4 S-Line, the saloon. So I've bought an estate now. This is not an S-Line, it's just a standard A4 B8. It's the CAGA engine code, so it's 143 brake horsepower, two liter TDI. And I'm gonna put some money into it. I mean, I've, I've already put a fair bit of money into it. I probably put over a grand into it already, just kind of sorting it out. When I went to buy it, I knew it needed new tires. It needed the CV joint went on it, so that needed doing. And the door locks were a bit iffy, the central locking, so I need to replace both front door locks as well. So basically I've just, I've already spent like over a grand on it and I plan on keeping it for a while, spending some money on it, and we're gonna see what we can do to it. So the first mod that pretty much anybody does is cold air intake. So I have got the Ram Air air intake here, which is what we're gonna be installing today. I don't know if anybody knows this, but there isn't actually a full induction kit. This is the filter right there from Ram Air. Comes with Jubilee clip and a load of different resizers. Basically, you just have to buy the actual filter itself, the cone head, because there isn't a hose that comes with it. Uh, and I even asked Darkside about this as well, Darkside Developments, and they basically said that these cars have reinforced rubber hosing so it's not likely to collapse anyway so you don't need the silicone but if anybody does know where to get a silicone hose from let me know in the comments because kind of want one but we're just going to get on with this all in this now so let's let's do it all right so this is the stock air intake which is obviously a panel filter because it is diesel it is tdi and we're going to take this air box out not sure about this sensor what we're going to do about that but uh, all of this has got to come out anyway, so these look like Torx heads to me and there's just some clips on the side that need to pop out, so we'll get on with it. Alright, so essentially it's just T30 screws and T20 screws that are holding the airbox in and this front trim, you have to lift that out. Uh, there's just four torque screws that comes out and then you can take out the scoop that was in there. As you can see, we've the airbox out here and the air filter is on. Just use one of the reducing rings and then just secured it on with the Jubilee clip supplied with the air filter. However, we now have this hose, which is a little vacuum ting. Not gonna leave that just like this because then we're gonna get engine codes come up and shit. So this bastard was in the bottom of the air box and we're just gonna reinstall that down there and replug this in just to stop the engine shitting itself when it doesn't have any vacuum, aren't we right? Yes. What are we doing here now, Ryan? Clearing any codes. Just giving it a bit of a read to see if any codes are coming up due to what we've just done. But so far, so good. Nothing about mass airflow or anything like that, so. Nope. That's all good. Right, lads, so as you can see, the air sensor is back on, filters attached, and then down there is the 
vacuum so we've just ran code tests on it no codes coming up whatsoever and also we've had to do this bit of a bit of a bodge type thing with the zip ties just ran some across here across here and then down to that beam down there just to keep equal tension on it so it's not going to be rattly as fuck and uh, just to keep it off any edges down here keep keep the filter clean so that's it job done now just to show you guys when you're taking this plastic off at the front here and when you put it back on there's clips all along the front of the grill so when you're putting it back in make sure these slide in behind all the way along before you put back your four T30 screws okay so sound comparison test I like it. I like the uh, the increase in induction noise and the real test. Like this has a rev limiter on it for like kind of a weird version of launch control. Um, you can basically put it in first gear with the clutch in and put your foot flat, and it'll only rev to two and a half thousand. So then you can dump the clutch and fucking take off. But it's annoying when you're trying to test things like this. But sounds pretty good so far, and it's definitely gonna help the intake. And then I'll get like a proper test out of it when I take it for a drive uh, the main reason I went with a ram air filter by the way is because they're pretty cost effective and they're known for not causing too many problems with the ECU and coming up with codes and stuff so they're pretty compatible with with anything and um, so that's why I went for that and also the kits are really hard to find like with both the heat shield and the silicon hosing I think the only kit that I'm aware of for this engine is the CTS one but that one's gonna set you back like a good few hundred quid whereas this filter you can get for 30 40 quid and you're gonna get the sound difference you're gonna get the intake difference you're just not gonna have the heat shield so I mean it's up to you but I don't really want to spend like three four hundred quid just for an extra what five horsepower like it's kind of pretty pointless um, but that was the install if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments I'm always reading them replying absolutely no problem at all uh, if this has helped you install your own then make sure to drop a like and it really helps out the channel make sure to go down there click the subscribe button to get notified every time i upload and i'll see you in the next one